Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through my process for drawing these three poses and talk a little bit about what I think goes into trying to construct the superheroine female form in a flying pose. And I've got some exciting news for you. This video has been sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning platform with a plethora of fantastic classes for you to learn from. So Skillshare has a ton of great classes on comic art, everything from penciling, inking, and coloring. Uh, you can find things on architectural rendering. You can find things on cartooning, uh, digital painting, which I like to practice with and play around with and obviously teach. So just a ton of great classes on here that I can't really recommend highly enough. Some of them have been very impactful to my own art style. So keep in mind that I'm going to include a link in the description box below that will allow the first 500 people to use it to get two months free. You can also check out my classes on Skillshare. I would love to know what you think about them. So without further ado, let's jump on into the video. All right, so poses, as you know, are one of my favorite things to do and essential to getting better at storytelling. And flying poses are pretty tricky. It's one of those things where it's very easy to make the character not look dynamic enough. So one of the things that happens is when a character like this would be residing against the ground, you have to make them react against the ground. But in flying poses, they're reacting to nothing. They can just be using power to propel themselves. So you have more range of movement. Now, one of the things I think is important to pay attention to for flying poses is gymnastics and dancing. I didn't use any reference in these particular drawings. Uh, but there's a lot of times that I take the time to study from, again, dancing and gymnastics because they're flying through the air, they're propelling their body with energy and force and momentum, and that's the kind of feeling that you want for some of these. Now keep in mind, some of these sketches don't make it to the end result, just kind of one of the things that happens, but allow yourself to do that and not be too worried about you know, making sure that everyone is perfect. This is very much a exploratory type process you have to try some things out see what works see what doesn't you know just have fun with it but now the other thing is generally you're going to counterpoise the character and that means uh contrapose so you're going to have a left arm forward and to counterbalance they're going to have the right leg up or you know kind of forward so you notice with the first pose i actually didn't do that correct so that's a an unbalanced pose but again, I feel like if it's a floating character, somebody with power, emanating energy, whatever, you can kind of stretch the rules a bit more. But again, if you're trying to create that feeling of a jump, you're going to put one arm up and the counter leg will be up with it. So just think of a basketball player doing a layup, basically, something like that. So for this last pose, I obviously wanted something more dramatic and foreshortened. And this isn't the easiest thing for me to accomplish. I think one of the reasons we struggle with foreshortening is it's so hard to find reference when you are studying from reference. So good luck finding somebody doing a pose like this. So that's one of the things. And the other thing is that it just becomes very easy to just draw everybody static and more boring. You have to really force yourself to try to propel a character off the page. But I feel like this tells such a great story when you're doing comics, it's such a powerful shot. So even though it's not correct, I feel like the torso actually needs to be higher up and not so level with the rest of the body. Uh, I still feel it's important to keep practicing these more difficult poses because again, it gives you more range of storytelling. So really catalog these poses. I think it's important to practice these very often and save them and then practice drawing your favorite superheroes over top or your own imaginative characters and really see how you can develop this even further, but get used to looking through this. And then also, if there's ways that you can look at it and improve upon it, then do so. You know, maybe take a pose that you drew six months ago and see what you can do to embellish it and make it better. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I appreciate the support of the channel. More content is on the way. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.